item on our agenda this evening is to uh, read a proclamation related to Red Ribbon Week. And this was requested uh, by a group of the young Marines, and there several of them are here tonight. Uh, there was a family that wrote us letters and uh, asked if we would do this. Um, and we're very happy to have you here, and I'm going to read the proclamation, and then I will come down and let all of you come up, uh, and if you want to have pictures taken or anything you want to do, or anything you want to say about your program, uh, we'll do it then. Okay? So we'll start with the, with the proclamation. Small print. <laughs> Okay, this is for Red Ribbon Week. Whereas communities across America have been plagued by numerous problems associated with illicit drug use and those who traffic in them, and whereas there is hope in winning the war on drugs, and that hope lies in education and drug demand reduction, coupled with the hard work and determination of organizations such as the Southland Young Marines of the Marine Corps League to foster a healthy, drug-free lifestyle. Whereas governments and community leaders know that citizen support is one of the most effective ways in the effort to reduce the use of illicit drugs to our communities. Whereas the Red Ribbon has been chosen as a symbol commemorating the work of Enrique Kiki Camarina, a Drug Enforcement Administrative agent, Administration agent who was murdered in the line of duty and represents the belief that one person can make a difference. And whereas the Red Ribbon Campaign was established by Congress in 1988 to encourage a drug-free lifestyle and involvement in drug prevention and reduction efforts. And whereas October 23 to 31 has been designated National Red Ribbon Week, which encourages Americans to wear a red ribbon to show their support for a drug-free environment. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Curtis W. Morris, Mayor Pro Tem, Dennis Bertone, Council Members Emmett Badar, John Ebner, and Ryan Vienna do hereby proclaim October 23 to 31, 2019, as Red Ribbon Week. During this event, we urge all citizens to join with appropriate celebrations and observations. That's the, the, uh, the proclamation. And uh, we do have, I, there may be other people who are not in uniform that are part of this. And if you are, please come up and join us. The South Bend Young Marines program is a nonprofit organization for boys and girls ages 8 through the completion of high school. Um, we teach teamwork, leadership, and discipline with a focus on um, veteran appreciation as well as living a drug free lifestyle. We wear a red paracord bracelet to represent our commitment against living a drug free lifestyle. And um, obviously, we're here because of the Red Ribbon Week today. In, I don't know what else to say, but um, that's about it. Well, you're, work, you're on a noble quest to Thank keep you. people Thank drug you. free. Thank you. This is our proclamation, uh, and I would like to give it to you. 
If you have anyone who would like to take pictures, yes, can we have you, can, you can stand up, come to any place you want, and we'd like to have all of you come back out oh, here and put into a, a place for picture taking. <coughs> With me. Come over here, Grace is here, everybody's here. Next, we have a report on the October 25th and 26th, 2019 Halloween Spooktacular Family Fun Weekend. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, just briefly want to remind everyone at home and, and you city council members about our Halloween Spooktacular this year. This year is a different type of event rather than doing one day. We're actually having it for two days, which uh, commences on Friday with a trunk or treat and pumpkin carving contest. There will also be a Halloween themed movie in the Civic Center uh, Plaza here in front of City Hall. And um, the following day, we have the, the run, which is still a 5K. There, there will be a, a toddler run as well, but the uh, big difference here is that you can all come in costume. And uh, this will be a very fun event. We're looking forward to it. We've been hearing a lot of buzz in the community, so we are very excited. And um, I can answer any questions about the event at this time. Otherwise, uh, we look forward to seeing all of you there in attendance. What, what are the dates? That was October. That's October um, 25th and 26th. It starts at, on Friday at 5 p.m. And then the run the following morning is at 8 a.m. And I've heard that uh, the runners have gotten like a postcard telling them that the traditional time for that run being September had been moved into October. So that was a, a thoughtful touch so they, so they know that. Correct. That is correct. Thank you. You're also starting at a more humane hour. <laughs> okay. Any other announcements? Any events that we're having? If not, we'll move on to oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to address the City Council on matters uh, that are within our jurisdiction and of interest. Uh, in order to participate, uh, you come up to the microphone. We ask that you tell us who you are and, uh, and where you live, but that is not a legal requirement. You may speak to us without doing that. Uh, and we do have a time limit for three minutes. So if whoever would like to start, time. Mayor Morris and members of the City Council, my name is Dave Milbrand. I come to you tonight not as a teacher, but as a resident of the neighborhood behind Sandy Miss High School. While I'll decline to give you my exact address, because I'd rather not have students make an unannounced visit at, say, 3 in the morning, like they've done <laughs> in the past, um, I do want to say that I've observed an increase in traffic problems and criminal behavior and activity in our neighborhood over the last 19 years that I've lived in this area. Every weekday morning and afternoon, we do have cars blocking access to our cul-de-sac on a regular basis as they drop off and pick up their students. Uh, we have to plan our departures and arrival around these individuals, and heaven forbid an emergency vehicle would need to come up there at those given times. Access would be very hard, if not impossible. But these concerns are the tip of the iceberg. While my neighbors have observed different kinds of illegal activities from the people in the cars that line our streets, I and my family have specifically witnessed wrong way parking, increased littering, marijuana usage, and on one afternoon, a young couple engaged in a lewd act across the street from our home. 
Why didn't we call the police, you might ask? Well, it was impossible to prove to whom this discarded trash and drug paraphernalia belonged. And quite honestly, my wife really wasn't sure how to explain to our four-year-old niece who was visiting that day that she was calling the sheriff's because the teenagers across the street were having sex in their car. Some might blame the high school or the school district, but beyond asking parents or students to not cause a public nuisance, they don't have any legal authority to regulate those streets or the parking or anything else that happens out there. One would suggest we might go to the city to find a solution. We've done that more than once. I personally worked with my neighbors, school board members, and city staff, and those have been unsuccessful. We had a neighborhood vote about five years ago that resulted in a 10 to 6 vote in favor of restricted parking on Dane Croft and Benwood. But we were informed that anyone who did not vote was considered a no vote. And this might be an intricacy of city code here in San Dimas, but as a government teacher, I can assure you this isn't the norm everywhere else. I can probably guarantee that Mitt Romney and Hillary Clinton would have loved to have some of those non-votes in the last couple of election cycles, and they didn't get them. I brought up this matter several years ago at a community meeting and was told by city staff, this is a problem at all schools. Knowing what I know today, I would have been sorely tempted to respond that I hope teens hotboxing and having sex in public is not a problem behind other schools in our fine city. So is there a solution to the problem? There absolutely is, and it's one that was working for years for our neighbors out to the east in the city of Laverne. They have permitted parking during school hours up to about a half mile away from Benita High School. They have little permits they hang on their cars, and it works pretty well here. And my in-laws can attest to the fact that this has prevented people in the their neighborhood from experiencing the problems we have in ours. I'm hopeful that with some new city management that we have here, these matters will be considered with the seriousness they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the city council? You guys, thank you for having me. Dan Daniel, I also live behind the high school. Uh, by the way, this is to permit the city of Laverne issues. Okay, we happen to get one from his in-laws. Um, a little bit of history on this, because this has been an ongoing issue for 20 years or so. It didn't get really bad until the Performing Arts Center came up, when, of course, the school lost half their parking lot. Um, it's been ongoing. I've been to several meetings with traffic safety, where, frankly, the school board never showed up to help, for whatever reason, so it could, it could never be talked about there. Uh, we've had petitions, we've had meetings, we've talked to the Sheriff's Department, they can't do anything because they can enforce traffic laws, they can't enforce parking, unless it's, of course, illegally parked. We did have a vote. In my opinion, it was kind of rigged so we couldn't win by counting non-votes as no votes. Um, that was done by Mr. Patel and Mr. Michaelis. Um, the hope is now with Mr. Michaelis gone, some common sense could come about um, and we could get this thing finally fixed. Now, I don't come to you with a problem without a solution. I like permit parking. The neighbors would also like permit parking. But I also think we need to put in an exclusion for commercial vehicles. So for the Pullman, the Gardner, FedEx, those guys obviously don't need permits. They shouldn't be parking there long. But if we're having construction done, um, we shouldn't need permits for those types of vehicles. But I think it's time we do something because of the trash. And I know they caught somebody having sex in their car a while back. We actually ran somebody off Friday night, um, parked behind the uh, Swim and Racket Club. So it was a black SUV. If your parents are out there, if your kids had your car, you know where they were. Um, so I don't know what we can do, but I, I come to you for help and hoping that now we could finally get something done um, that makes sense. I don't think I'm asking for anything unreasonable, just something that works for us, works for the school, and works for the city. And frankly, it helps the sheriffs as well, because it keeps the kids in a safer place in a more controlled environment. So if you've got any suggestions, I'm open to anything. If you want to have a meeting with the neighborhood, I can arrange it. Um, it literally is only about 20 houses that are affected. Later in the year, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right now, we're probably 12 to 15 cars Towards the end of the year, we get up to 40 cars a day. Imagine 40 cars parked on each side of the street and you having to get an ambulance, a fire truck, or even a big truck with a trailer in there. You can't. So help us before something worse happens. All right? I think I'm out of time. Hey, eight seconds. Our, good. our lack of a response is, is 
because of the Brown Act. We are not permitted to discuss with you anything that's not on our agenda. And since this is not on our agenda, the only thing we can do is to ask the staff to take a look at it or something, but we can't have a discussion with you. So it's not that we're not interested. It's that's, And I'm fully that's aware of that, and my okay. whole reason for coming here tonight well, is I'm glad, to get no, it on the agenda. Well, we, we will. This, the staff heard your your uh, your comments and uh, they can take a look at it. I can tell you I live near a school and uh, it's a, it is a problem. And I would literally, I know my three minutes are up, but I don't care. Um, I would welcome any of you guys to come out between 7.15 and 7.30, 2.15 and 2.30, 3.15 and 3.30 and see the problems we have to deal with. It's, it's a raceway out there, it's crazy. And if you live near an elementary school, it's also at noon. So. Well, luckily I don't. I just have a middle school and a high school to contend with. So. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, well, guys. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the city council? Good evening, uh, good evening. city council and uh, everyone here. So I do have uh, good news and bad news that I want to share with you. Good news is that we are going to remodel our library again. So oh, okay. this time that we are going to uh, install the step check out desk and we are going to uh, introduce the one service uh, desk model. So there's a no kind of uh, customer need to come to the different decks, ask for different questions. So it was a very good model. The bad news is that because of the project, the library will be closed uh, for about four weeks. So we are scheduled to close the starting on November 12th, and we will uh, reschedule to open on Monday, December 9th. So du during this uh, closure time, our book drop will remain open, so customers can still return their uh, books uh, in our book drop. Our staff will kind of check the book drop the probably several times a day. And uh, uh, so if you have holes, that uh, you request books, all the holes will be transferred to Laverne Library. And uh, we are sorry for this uh, inconvenience, but it's uh, for the, in the future, we have a better and beautiful library. So I believe it's worth all the inconvenience, for my opinion. <laughs> And uh, during this, uh, before we close, we still have a lot of the good services to the uh, customers or to the residents. Um, so the popular, the in and out burger, the cover to cover club is back. So the kids, for kids age 4 to 12, and everyone that read five books, they will get uh, one free uh, in and out certificate. And every kid can get up choose three certificate. And so of course, this program will end before we close, which will be November 9. And we do have another good uh, event for friends of the St. Dimas Library. We are going to have a $3 fill a bag book sale on October 26th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So all the books in the meeting room that you fit into the bag, it will be only three dollars, and in, including that a lot of the good classics and children book. And thanks for your understanding and support for the library services. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the city council? Okay, we'll move on to the consent calendar. All the items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and will be enacted with one motion unless there is a request by a member of the council to remove an item for separate discussion. Move, Move approval. approval. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the consent calendar. Is there any uh, additional comments? Any uh, body opposed to the motion? Hearing none, it carries by a 4-0, a unanimous vote with one absentee. The next item on our agenda. is we are at the end of the consent calendar and so we're back to oral communications. The only difference between this period of oral communications and the one we just finished is the time limit is five minutes. Does anybody want to talk to the city council now? 
Okay, seeing no one come forward, we will uh, call on the city manager. A couple of items. <clears throat> First off, I would like did, to. Did you want to speak? Uh, the first item I would like to address is the, the comments made by Mr. Uh, Milbrand and, and Mr. Daniels. We will reach out to them and uh, make contact and discuss the parking concerns that they've raised. Uh, it's been an issue that has been um, you know, ongoing, as they mentioned, for a number of years. There are a couple of options, but we do need to get um, the, the neighborhood agreement that we either do a time parking program or a permit parking program. So we will work uh, with them to uh, explore those options. A uh, couple of um, upcoming events and activities. First off, this Friday, um, October 11th, at 3.30 in the afternoon will be the annual Sandy Miss High School Homecoming Parade, which will be on Sandy Miss Avenue. Uh, it starts on a glacier, um, and it will end on Monte Vista or, or Cataract in that general area. Um, so we welcome the community to come out and support your local schools. Uh, there's good representation from the high school as well as the middle school and all the elementary schools. Uh, but we also caution that during that time period from around 3 to about 4.30 or 5, there will be some traffic impacts on Benita Avenue and Sandy Miss Avenue. So if you're not participating in the parade, you may want to avoid that area. Um, also, on uh, next Monday, uh, October 14th, the City Council will be having a retreat um, a study session. It's a public meeting. Uh, it starts at 5 o'clock, and it's an opportunity that the uh, city staff and the city council have uh, usually twice a year where we uh, get the opportunity to, to really de um, dig deep into some specific topics that uh, we get some direction from the council on. So if you're interested in that, look at our website. You can see the agenda. Uh, also, uh, on Tuesday, October 15th at 6.30 p.m. in the Senior Center, the city will be conducting a community meeting regarding our coyote management plan. Uh, this is something that's been talked about for the last couple of months. Um, last time it was brought before the city council, they asked for some additional information from staff. Staff's been working with some um, experts and we have some additional information and this will be an opportunity to get some additional feedback from the community. So again, that's uh, Tuesday, October 15th, uh, 6.30 in the Senior Center. And again, if you go to our website, you can get more information. Uh, also, the city just launched a new graffiti abatement um, contractor uh, that started um, on October 1st. So we do have a new graffiti hotline number. Um, and again, if you go to our website, you can get that. But if, for those of you who might have a pen and paper handy, uh, that number is 909-542-2500. Again, that's 909-542-2500. And that's an, a hotline that any resident can report graffiti that's in the public right-of-way or that's actually on private property that's accessible from the public right-of-way. So perimeter walls, alleys, and so forth, the graffiti uh, abatement uh, vendor will take care of those situations. They will not go on private property um, unless it's one that's uh, adjacent to the public right-of-way. Uh, also uh, report that uh, there will not be a Ask the Mayor show this week. Um, the mayor and I will actually be at a insurance authority conference for the remainder of the week, so we will hold off for a couple weeks before we have our next Ask the Mayor. So I think those are all the updates that I have for tonight. Okay, thank you. I, I noticed people in the rodeo, uh, from the rodeo or in the audience, and you uh, were on the agenda, but you were on the consent agenda, and your request for $750 uh, contribution to the weed abatement was approved as a part of that. If you have any, if you would otherwise like to speak about anything, we'll certainly give you the opportunity to do so now. Or if you were looking for more and you thought you didn't get what you wanted, <laughs> but this is one of those times where silence is golden. You got what you wanted, and, but please, you're welcome. Thank you very much for contributing to that weed abatement. We all know that we had drought for many, many years, and when rain comes and it ends the drought the weeds come up, so we appreciate any help because we're a nonprofit organization raising money for scholarships for our local high school students. So any money that we bring in, we like to give back to our students, so any help is greatly appreciated and we do appreciate that, so thank you. Thank you. While you're, excuse me, while you're up here, do you have an event that's coming up in the oh. near future? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm not used to speaking in public this and is I'm your a nervous wreck. For an advertisement. <laughs> so we would like to actually thank you all for all the support you've given to us over the last 24 years. 
This weekend we celebrate our 25th anniversary, which is a feat in Southern California. So we would like to invite all of you out to our rodeo. And we are also having a partner's reception on Thursday evening at 5.30 p.m. that you're more than welcome to attend that as well and um, help us celebrate 25 years of produ producing a rodeo in this beautiful city. What, what are the dates of the rodeo? It's the 12th and 13th. Okay. So we have coming... pre, yeah, the 12th and 13th. We have pre-rodeo activities both days. Um, Saturday, we have young aspiring cowboys that will be um, mutton busting, riding mini bulls. On Sunday is our annual Challenge Buckaroos program and that serves the, the children with special needs. They get to have um, a cowboy or cowgirl walk them through many rodeo events and that brings tears to everybody's eyes. So again, this Friday or Saturday, Sunday is the rodeo. Events start at one, the actual rodeo starts at two. Um, Thursday night is our partner's reception and we would encourage you all to, to come if you can. And if you'd like to attend the rodeo, just let us know because we would love to have you as well. Where is the partner's reception? It is up on the rodeo grounds. At the rodeo grounds? In the VIP tent. Okay, and what time is that? 5.30. 5.30. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. City Attorney. I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Okay, members of the City Council, first is a council member report on meetings attended at the expense of the city since we last reported. Does anybody have anything to report? Okay, there's nothing to report, so we'll go to individual members' comments and updates. Start with Ryan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, one thing I, I will add on the, on the parking thing, and I appreciate Ken uh, looking into it. I know Mr. Milbrandt and uh, Mr. Daniel uh, had been communicating with me in the last week or so. Um, but even before that, uh, two years ago or so, kind of started looking at that. And I've driven by there at the different times. It certainly is an issue. Um, I did ask uh, the city attorney previously regarding the methodology on the, the polling uh, and the, um, the no vote, no count type thing, or, or did count actually type thing. Um, so I appreciate you looking back into that. Uh, and I think that community will too. Um, you know, there are areas, most recently Claremont, uh, near the uh, meat cellar actually is instituted parking, which was new because it certainly made it harder to park there um, to go to dinner to that restaurant. But they actually instituted that just on that street. Um, and I offer that as, as a point of discussion for when we get back into um, Maxis again with Walnut. Um, I think that's another model uh, if, we, if we look at implementing something with permitting. Um, I do think there's a use for that method or that, uh, that plan um, that probably would be appropriate in other areas of the city as we evolve. So um, thank you for that. Red Ribbon Week, uh, I thank the Young Marines for bringing that up. I think last year uh, I had asked why we weren't recognizing it, and it's pretty cool to see uh, an organization came and uh, brought it forward. So thank you, Young Marines, for doing that. And lastly, uh, I wanted to commend staff. Um, Social media seems to be getting uh, more and more robust uh, in San Dimas, and um, I've noticed now they're adding events. Um, so I know tonight's council meeting was added as an event. The Coyote information session has been added as an event. I think the um, one of the events, it might be the Coyote information session, seemed to have like, it was, no, it's not that one. It's the Holiday Spectacular has like 1.8 thousand people um, who have expressed interest in the event. Um, so I think it's a good thing uh, that the city is starting to move in that direction. I'm a little saddened because it's gonna pull traffic from my Facebook page, but that's okay. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a very positive thing. Uh, one thing, and um, I know the other community um, organizations do this, um, but I know, I think Mr. Enderley has brought it up in the past is utilizing uh, the city's page to be able to push out some of the nonprofit organizations uh, events. Um, I don't know whether or not, and I, and I don't know from the city attorney's seat or, or otherwise, whether or not uh, it would be a good use or appropriate but I know we do so many events with the chamber, uh, which we partner with. We have rodeo. Um, we have a whole bunch of events that go on in the city. So 
uh, even if we don't push them out, uh, it would be pretty cool to actually list them under the events page as just something happening in the city. Um, and you can do that as I do on my city council page by simply clicking add to page and then it just literally listed as an event that someone who may have an interest in a particular page can see. So um, I offer that up as food for thought as people continue to look and I know we want them to go to our city website uh, and look at the different events um, but as social media continues to be engaging uh, it would be cool maybe to be able to help people find those other events that go on even the ribbon cuttings for example I don't know that uh, a lot of people even are privy to when we do the ribbon cuttings unless you're affiliated with the chamber in one way or another um, so anyways uh, that's pretty much all I got um, thank you so much thank you John well just briefly I uh, went down to the wine and beer walk on Saturday and that was pretty well attended so um, thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for putting on and all the volunteers saw a lot of volunteers working on that a lot of people that seemed happy saw a drone flying overhead so somebody has probably got a video posted someplace but um, but anyway it was it was a good event lots of uh, lots of local breweries and uh, and connoisseurs of wine and antique stores and everything else because the businesses were open and uh, uh, getting some sales. Um, the only other thing is, as, the May, as uh, Ken mentioned, we've got the fall retreat, staff and city council coming up on Monday, that's six days from now, October 14th at five o'clock. And I just wanted to mention that one of the items that is on the agenda that I asked to be put on there was uh, about the dais seating arrangement and a way forward on what we might want to do or look forward to or what the plan might be just so we can See if we could come to some kind of uh, resolution on that, um, at least for for now. So uh, anyway, that's uh, but that and more is on the city council retreat agenda, and you, as Ken said, you can see that online. And that's all I have. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, next Wednesday, which is October sixteenth, uh, the city of San Dimas Parks and Recreation Department is having a community health and resource fair, and it's between ten and one here. Uh, in the senior center, and uh, there'll be free flu shots, uh, there'll be information booths, there'll be health booths, there'll be all sorts of medical advice, and again, it's, that's open to everyone, you don't have to be a senior, and it's next Wednesday, the 16th, from 10 to 1, and if you haven't had your flu shot, this is a good time to get it, the, the flu shots are courtesy of CVS Drugstore, so hope to see you there Wednesday, thank you. Thank you. I don't have anything to add to the events, so uh, we will be adjourning now to uh, 5 o'clock on October 14th for the City Council and staff retreat. We are adjourned.